A warm spring day in Northern Ireland and the children are out from school and having fun. It's a deceptively tranquil picture. These children are living in the Ardoin, an area of Belfast that stays resolutely sectarian, where Protestant and Catholic hatred is a part of everyday life. Children here have to be bused to and from school, in a part of Britain where the religious divide has spawned more than 30 years of violence and thousands of deaths. Protestant Orangemen marching at Drum Cree, where the two sides of the religious divide annually stage a confrontation which has fueled rioting throughout the whole of Northern Ireland. Police were caught in the middle of this almost tribal conflict which takes place year after year. The particular dispute here, the right of Protestants to march through a Catholic area. Today, on the surface, ceasefires have brought calm to places like the Ardoin. From a distance, the terraced houses look at peace, but the streets are divided along religious lines. A recent study has shown that the hatred that fed the troubles is alive and being transmitted through the community at a disturbingly early age. The results of a recent survey of 352 children are worrying. A University of Ulster sociologist questioned the children who were between the ages of three and six. It was surprising that at the age of three, children are already picking up sort of the, the traits of their community. I mean, for example, um, twice as many Catholic three-year-olds said they hated the police compared to Protestants. And similarly, similar number, twice as many said they didn't like orange marches, which is a Protestant sort of uh, tradition compared to Protestant children. So they're already picking up these things at a very early age. Last year, for children at the Holy Cross School in the Ardoin, that sectarian hatred was a brutal reality. Catholic children were filled with fear as they walked through an angry Protestant crowd. Again, the police were called in to act as a buffer. It was a graphic reflection that the years of ceasefire had done little to quell the intensity of the visceral hatred felt between Protestant and Catholic. Today, the teachers at the Holy Cross School are working hard to overcome the trauma suffered by the young girls. School principal Anne Tanny is leading the task of trying to give the children as normal an education as possible. Of course, we did get a lot of children counselled. We had the help of a local counselling service and over 100 children were counselled. And I think that has helped them. And we work very hard to show them that they are important, that they are unique. And we have our special uh, education program going through the school. And being a Catholic school, we believe that we have to live with everybody and we have to pray for everybody. And even during the protests, that is what we did. There's no doubt it's a religious school. Religion is the cornerstone of the school's teaching. The children are encouraged to be tolerant of their neighbours. But despite the rigorously encouraged Christian values, it's the destructive side of religious belief that's meant the children being bombarded with hatred outside the school's gates. I think now what they associate, they associate certain colours, like the colour of the, um, the British flag, red, white and blue, and maybe the uh, curbstones painted red, white and blue. They associate that with the trauma that they went through. So they can sometimes say that if they're in an area where they see the flags flying or the curbstones are painted, they get anxious and they will cling to their mothers. We've been told this by the parents. Um, because the word Protestant had been associated with some of the people that were on the road, they will go into an area and perhaps ask their parents, are there Protestants here? And I think that's been one of the saddest things about this because this is the first time that they have actually been brought up against this problem. Brownlow College in North Armagh, not far from Drum Cree. It's break time and the children are using their pocket money to satisfy their stomachs. These children are both Protestants and Catholics. It's called an integrated college and is part of a movement in Northern Ireland to counter the sectarian nature of education. So far, 16,000 children have been enrolled in the integrated schools, but that's just 5% of the children at school in Northern Ireland. Even so, it's a philosophy the pupils have taken to. In this school, we um, know how to 
um, work with other people of different religions and how to respect others and what they believe in and um, we'll also learn about their faiths and backgrounds. Because I think it's the way it's meant to be, everybody in the world together. It's good practice. No one bullies anyone else because of religion or anything like that. We can say, don't make the past turn you into a prisoner, but make the past something that you learn from and realise that everybody has hurt everyone else, that nobody is innocent of conflict, that we're all capable of it and all involved in it. But we can all be involved in the resolution of that conflict. Conflict is human. It's how you manage the conflict that makes you more human. The Ardoin is one of the most socially deprived areas of Europe. This mural depicts the events of the children's ordeal on their way to the Holy Cross School. It draws comparisons with the civil rights struggle in the southern United States and the early troubles of busing black children to school in Arkansas in the last century. For the children of the Ardoin, the future is far from rosy. What we're finding then is that there's different worlds and for some children living in Ardoin and places like that, they inhabit a very different world to other children. But their world is increasingly becoming constrained, uh, ghettoised, and that's the reality for them. And that's something we need to be concerned about in terms of government here in Northern Ireland and what we should do to try and address that problem. Children have been integral to the search for peace in Northern Ireland. Former President Clinton's groundbreaking visit was key to establishing the ceasefire in the province. But the highlight from the presidential trip three years ago was this plea from a little girl. My name is Catherine Hamill. My daddy works as an assistant at Stuart's Warehouse. I live in Belfast. I love where I live. My first daddy died in the Troubles. It was the saddest day of my life. I still think of him. Now it is nice and peaceful. I like having peace and quiet for a change instead of people shooting and killing. My, my Christmas wish is that peace and love will last in Ireland forever. But that wish for children in places like the Ardoin still looks a long way off. With feelings of ill will prevalent in such a young age, it'll be many years before the scars left by violence and hatred will be fully healed. It seems in some parts of Northern Ireland, saying goodbye to the troubles is proving extremely difficult.